So Rob said to talk fast, you're gonna see fast in action. All right, my name is Guadalupe Pineda. I live in San Luis Potosí, Mexico. And today we're here to support our colleagues and friends in Puerto Rico. Remember to donate. That's why we're here to donate. Okay, uh, to the question of what teachers can do to support and equip their students to become global citizens, the response is very simple. It's by becoming more accepting of other cultures. But this is a process. And the beginning of the process is with your own culture, in understanding your own culture, in understanding the things that you share with others, the things that make you different, and understanding above all that different does not mean better. All right, with this in mind, I came up with a project for my high school students, and I'd like to give you a little bit of context for what I did. First of all, uh, my students are in a private high school, they're privileged kids, and then about the city. San Luis Potosí is over 400 years old. It has a very traditional and historical downtown area which many years ago was the main commercial area for the city. But as the city grew, as the population grew, commercial enclaves became uh, more common around the outskirts of the city, making it less necessary for people to go downtown for their everyday things. All right, um, so I came up with an activity where students in a group would have to go downtown and uh, they would have to visit different places downtown talk to different people, interview them, and uh, do a couple of different things while they were there. Uh, my students, it, it must be said, their, their language skills are, they're pretty good. They're very fluent. All right, but I don't want you to stop, uh, to stop listening because I think that you can adapt this activity to whatever kind of student you have. All right, because this is a language project, obviously it had to have a linguistic aspect. And what they had to do was to make a PowerPoint presentation with visual cues using the photographs they took uh, on their visit. They also had to write a paper describing the places and the activities. And they had to give an oral presentation as a group using the cues on their PowerPoint presentation. At the end of the activity, they would have feedback with other groups and then finally with the whole class, including myself. Uh, this is also a humanistic project, which means it has an affective aspect. The first part is to become aware of their cultural heritage. And the second is to understand the similarities and differences in how people live. Now, the first thing that they had to do in their project was to take the bus downtown. Now this, Sounds very commonplace, but since my kids are pretty privileged, a lot of them had never used public tra transportation. Um, their parents would drive them where they had to go and some of them had their own cars. So when they were doing the feedback session, they talked about the different kinds of people that use the bus, about students or workers or housewives and business people because the main avenue where the bus goes, uh, there are a lot of businesses there. They also talked about how it was a very efficient mode of transportation and very inexpensive because they didn't have to worry about paying for a parking garage. They also went to one of the local markets. The markets downtown, they sell everything from produce to meat to household items to things for tourists. And while they were there, they had to interview a stall vendor. And they came up uh, against a little problem here because the vendors were very reluctant to talk to them. And but being very good detectives, uh, they discovered that the reason for this was that many of the vendors pay for the privilege of having a stall. And uh, during the feedback, they discussed how, this, how they found that this was very unfair because people work very long hours to make a living. A lot of people have more than one or two jobs and they also have to pay for the privilege of working. Um, as you can see here, the interview, uh, this is just a sample interview and they were free to ask whatever questions they liked. Uh, they came up with their own questions and then they noted the answers. 
the only condition to the questions that they asked was that they had to be very respectful and very mindful of the people that they were talking to. They had to be very sensitive to how people were responding to their questions. The next thing they did, they visited a local church, not one of the large tourist churches like the cathedral, but the smaller ones. And what they noted was that even though uh, the churches were not tourist sites, they were all historical buildings and that they were all very well kept and that most of them were open during the day for parishioners and worshipers to visit. Um, then they had to go to a plaza, which is a, a public square, and they were surprised to see that life takes place outside, uh, not in a mall. And here um, they were exposed to people meeting at the plazas for dates, kids playing after school. There were vendors, there were musicians, and all kinds of activities take place. As you can see here in the picture, the square is set up with benches, and this is because in the evening there was going to be a screening of a movie. So they had no idea those things took place. Then this is this was their favorite activity. Uh, they had to have a meal at a fonda, which is a local neighborhood restaurant or a market restaurant. And first of all, they all came back saying that the food was absolutely delicious and everything that they ate, whether it was traditional Mexican food or Mexicanized American food like hamburgers, that it was all great. And they noted that it was really very inexpensive to eat here. Uh, back then, it cost them about one US dollar for a meal. They also had to perform a random act of kindness. And again, they were free to do whatever they wanted to do. In this first picture, this boy is an excellent singer. And he joined a group of blind performers. And while he was singing with them, they actually drew a very large crowd. And the group of performers went home with quite a bit of money that day. The second group was walking along the street and they saw this homeless woman and when they went to have lunch, they ordered her an extra a plate and they went back, they found her and they gave her her lunch. This last group, what they did was that they found a bunch of kids on the street on this beautiful day. You can see that it's sunny and they bought them ice cream. So this was uh, this this activity was intended for them to connect with people who who live in uh, I mean, who live and work in the downtown area, people who are, like I said, very different than they are. All right, now, what happens if you don't have a historical area where you live? That's not a problem because the main thing is for students to talk to people who are different than them. And when I say different, it can be practically anyone because students can visit a center for people with disabilities. They can visit a retirement home and talk to older people. They can visit a children's ward. They can talk to kids. They can go to a local university and talk to college kids or to college professors. They can go to a center for the arts and talk to artists there. In every single case, uh, however you adapt your project, the linguistic aspects can remain the same. They can have a creative, creative aspect like the photographs in my case. They can have uh, written aspects. The students can write, you know, even a list of words of the things they saw to things that are much more complicated like mine did and uh, the, it can have an oral aspect where students can say as little uh, as they want as you want or as much as you want with whatever criteria you set up for them and the important thing is that people see that students see how other people live that they appreciate that as humans, we're all very unique individuals, but within that uniqueness, we're also very similar to each other. So I think that it's by being aware of how unique we are and accepting that uniqueness within the sim similarity, I think that that's the key to accepting all people and to accepting all 
uh, cultures and to becoming global citizens. So uh, that's the end. And I, I have the information here so that you can make your donation. And uh, thank you so much for being thank here you. and joining. Thank you.